Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I've suspected things had been going on for a while, but kept brushing it off. I thought he would never do that to me. Since around April 2020, he's been refusing my attempts to be intimate, most of the time sitting differently on the couch, facing away from me, little things like that. It's with one of our good friends. She came to my house a few weeks ago. She's texted me, she's pretended to be there for me. I found out because I rolled over and saw they were having a Snapchat conversation. She said she wished she could be there to hold him, and he summarized that I tried to seduce him last night and mocked it. I confronted him, and he admitted it. He said that it was because lockdown was stressful, and he does not want to work things out. He thinks of me only as a friend in his heart. When I told her husband, he confronted her, and apparently they had actually kissed back in February 2020. I think, at that moment, I realized I was never going to be enough for him. We used to be so, so, so happy. The week before they kissed, we celebrated Valentine's Day together. He bought us a nice bottle of wine for our anniversary. We had fun. We were perfect. I don't know where to go from here. We've been married only about a year. I feel like, he took so much from me, and he doesn't even want to go to therapy or work this out. I don't want to leave my house, but everywhere in it, I see him. He chose her. I've been cheated on in every relationship I've ever been in. He was supposed to be my forever. I don't know what to do. I've made therapy appointments, but I was also laid off last month, so I have too much free time to analyze every single moment where he might have been lying to me or where I made myself look pathetic trying to cling to him. He's told everyone around him that it's all his fault and that he'd never want to hurt me, etc. He has never told me any of this. Yesterday, I came home to find a note requesting that I itemize what I want in a separation agreement, a note. There was nothing personalized, and it wasn't even signed. My dream has always been to have a husband and a family. I'm 30, and while logically, I know I can still have that, I keep feeling like I'm drowning. How do I start to get through this? I just let him know that, if he wants a divorce, then I would like to go no contact. I have a consultation with a pretty great lawyer this Thursday. I will not sit through a conversation full of his justifications. If you look at my post history, you can see what I've been trying to work through. D-Day was August 11th. On August 17th, I came home to a note, unsigned, that only said he wanted me to list the property I wanted per a separation agreement. We are in Virginia. On August 18th, I flew to see my friend in Denver to try and recover. I came back today. Yesterday, he texted me saying he wanted to talk when I got back. I responded that I wasn't ready. I had been ready the week before, but he had ignored me. Now, I start a new job tomorrow, and I can't be a blubbering mess going into it. I've realized, though, that unless he's planning on going to couples therapy and reconciliation, I don't want to talk. Anything else would be him justifying his actions. I believe his goal is for as quick of a divorce as possible. It breaks my heart, but I can't just sit there and listen to his excuses and how he's going to be with her. My main question, which I'll always want answered, is why he brought her into this house to hang out with me. It's just so brazen and cruel that during their affair, he let her pretend to be my friend in my own damn living room. Has anyone else been where I am? If he's divorcing me, then I don't want the closure talk. I want to keep moving forward, and I truly believe something like that will set me back. I'm not sure how to move on. When I found out, he told me he wasn't happy and that he only saw me as a friend. I cannot handle hearing that again. I'm not sure what to do from here. Update. I'm having a hard time seeing him out and about on social media since I found out on August 11th. Unfortunately, leaving isn't an option as I make an income from mine. He seems like he's living his best life. While I feel like I'm slowly melting into the floor, 
sometimes I wonder if he'll ever speak to me again. This wasn't my choice, I wanted to reconcile. He's acting like a 16-year-old who ghosted his high school girlfriend. Therapy is helping a lot, but sometimes I wonder when I'll be able to put myself out there again, like he's doing now. Today is a day where it feels like I'm at the bottom of a hole, looking up at the world above, with no way to get out. I can already feel myself wanting to talk to him more than anything. I know it's not healthy for me to do that. Half the time, I'm ignored, and the other half, I'm casually dismissed. I'm never going to get the response I want. For those who have been here before, what are your best tips to go no contact? I've gone 10 days no contact, and all I want to do is send this to him, but I can't because I know I won't get a response, and it will keep breaking me. Here's a basket of mixed signals to his friends, saying that he screwed up his life and cries all the time, while also saying he's changed and wants different things now. I know eventually we will have to talk, but I'm just too broken for that right now. I wrote this here just to have somewhere to put it. I can't keep it in my head. The door is open for you to come home and treat me and this marriage with the love and respect we deserve. You want different things now? Figure out what the hell they are and communicate them. Want a divorce? Hope you're ready for one heck of a fight. I listened to your mom when she told me to step up for myself in this and not make it easy for you. Trust me, I won't. You know you married a fighter. I pledge to stay married through better and worse. That includes your affair. That includes you changing what you want in life. I take my vows seriously, unlike you. So, if you want out, prepare yourself for one heck of a battle. But you can stop destroying your life, earn the respect of your friends and family back, and take me and this marriage seriously. You can come back from this, but only if you actually try and give me the effort I deserve. If we work on you, and if we work on us, otherwise, enjoy a sad, pitiful life alone without me. You'll regret it forever. This is the final update. I had one conversation with my husband since everything happened, at his request. It lasted maybe five minutes, and felt like talking to a robot. From what others have told me, he cries to people about how he ruined his life, but I have never once received an apology, or seen the same regret he shows others. At this point, I don't care. I know, he's still seeing the other woman, and frankly, they deserve each other. Good for them. While I still feel occasional anger, I no longer mourn what we once had. Instead, I'm incredibly excited for the life I now get to live. I moved to a small, walkable city and treated myself to my dream apartment. It's cozy and beautifully decorated, and it makes me happy every day. It's a far cry from our old, dreary house. In our marriage, I was the breadwinner, and he would make me feel guilty about wanting to enjoy nice meals or do fun things. Now, I've embraced doing all the foodie fun stuff I love, without feeling guilty. It's been refreshing. I've also dipped my toe into dating again. After a few mediocre dates through dating apps, I've met someone I really connect with. We're taking things slow, but it feels amazing to be appreciated and desired again. Dating has reminded me that I'm a catch who doesn't have to settle. Therapy has been a game-changer, and I'm so grateful I jumped into it right away. My therapist is proud of me, and more importantly, I'm proud of myself. I've stopped viewing my divorce as a failure. He failed, not me. Every morning, I wake up genuinely happy and no longer feel the crushing weight on my chest. The holidays were surprisingly easy, and I felt joy spending time with my family, without having to compromise anything. Looking back, I can't believe I wasted so much time trying to figure out how to get him to come home. I've made my own home and my own happiness, and that's worth so much more. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.